Well, hey folks, thanks for joining me today in the backcountry, hanging out, having a good time, testing out some gear, and we're gonna talk about why I don't get this compact hatchet. Now this nine inch hatchet is the Gerber Backpacks 2. And guys, not only do I not just quite understand this particular model by Gerber, um, but I just don't really understand a nine inch hatchet in general because I know some really well known established for like hundreds of years axe brands that sell these really tiny compact like carving hatchets I guess. Um, we're going to talk about what this is capable of. What? <laughs> okay. What it's not capable of. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. See? Both right fingers. Away. Right both away. fingers are coming Right off. away. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Look at Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Because I went into testing this little compact hatchet with, you know, some expectations. It's pitched as something that can be very compact, throw in a backpack. You know, you're maybe going to go up and make a little fire. You're going to do practice your woods craft skills, you know, whatever it may be. And you want something that's just got a really small footprint and be significantly lighter weight than some other hatchets that are on the market. But honestly, when I put this up against tools like its cousin, the Fiskars X7, which is a 14 inch hatchet or machete style choppers, say like an Ontario SP8. I'm just having a really hard time seeing how this makes more sense than these. In almost any scenario in any environment that I can come up with, think of, or have used tools like this in the past. So let's go ahead, take a look. I'm gonna show you everything that this little Backpacks 2 has going on. And we'll also again, talk the concept of smaller hatchets like this and where they might work and maybe where they don't. Now, right out of the gate, I wanna hit pricing with you. I picked this up over at GP Knives for $40 so that I could do this video for us. And that's usually about the going rate for this Gerber. And that's about the same cost that you can get the Freescape series from Gerber and they're slightly larger, which is basically the X7. And this guy comes in at just over 17 inches and this one only cost me about 50 bucks. And when we run in its cousin, the X7, it makes even less financial sense because this guy can easily be purchased between 25 and $30. And just for clarity's sake, as you hear me saying Fiskars and Gerber, Fiskars purchased Gerber years ago. So both of these hatchets, both the Gerbers and the Fiskars are both made by the same company, same steel, both made in Finland. It might as well make it a dog pile with the S-Wing 12 inch uh, sportsman's hatchet. This is a USA made hatchet. And this guy's gonna go for about 30 to $35 on average. Now, before we jump into the whole breakdown of this tool, let me show you the one shining point with this little hatchet. <laughs> Hold on one second, one second. What? <laughs> Okay, that's pretty sweet. I mean, I, I think there's no room for air. Like sure. if you ever yeah. over strike, oh, yeah. you know? I mean, <laughs> it's pretty comical though. It is I going. Gonna, I thought you were gonna be like, just like goofing with it, <laughs> you know, trying to get it to connect and. There it is. Yeah. And so surprisingly, it split much better than I and my buddy Mike was anticipating because of how precise you are able to control your swing. There's really no room for error, so you better make sure that you got a good swing. But when you contact with it, because it does have quite a bit of weight up front, you are able to get decent splitting tasks done for such a small little instrument. Now that splitting is made possible because of the fact it has basically the exact same head that's on your fist X7. So that's something really good to note. And what that means is you're getting a 0.6 inch thick head overall, and you're going to get that on both the X7 and on the uh, Gerber here. And you're getting a five inches from the back pommel to the edge, and then you're getting a 2.6 inch cutting edge. And it has that real nice thick V grind. And the steel composition is a high carbon steel. Uh, these hatchets are made in Finland. Uh, and it, it does have a Rockwell of 55. What I've found is that Gerber slash Fiskars steel that they use um, is pretty soft. Uh, the initial V grind that you get here will start to chip and roll real fast. Um, but once I let those chip out the kind of the first time, then I throw a convex edge on them. That's what my um, X7 has. And I kind of round out that edge a little bit there at the end and it will hold its edge much longer than the standard aggressive V grind. 
But after the splitting is where everything kind of started to go downhill for us. Uh, not only does this have kind of a large head for how small the rest of the body of the hatchet is, which gives you a lot of weight behind your swing, but because of how the edge geometry is and the, the thickness of the head, it kind of limits some of its actual punch and power because of how short the handle is. And we'll talk about handle here in just a little bit. And so I first chopped a piece of wood with the hatchet. Let's see how this little guy does. Let's try a big knife in comparison and see if there's any difference. Okay, top storm vector, huge 12 inch knife. Same piece of wood we just worked with the hatchet on. Let's see here. crap dude at least as good if not better and i'm not as fatigued i think that was less swings per whatever yeah nice that's a monster and as you can see there that tops was easily able to compete if not outperform this in a chopping task and a knife is going to have other capabilities as well. So that's definitely something that you need to consider. Delimbing usually tends to be a lot easier with a, a large chopping machete than with a hatchet. I've found it like, tends to be a little bit safer as well, a little bit more controllable. Um, so for people maybe that aren't really familiar with edge tools, it's easy to give them. Or if you're learning, that's something uh, to consider as well. And splitting tasks uh, can be very easily done with a large chopper as well. When we're talking about how compact this little hatchet is, is I was splitting exact same pieces of wood without much difficulty with the larger chopping knife. So it ends up being basically a break even when it comes to chopping or splitting compared to a large knife when we're talking about this size of hatchet. All right, let's hit this handle because that's where I start having a lot of issues is that the handle being nine inches from the top up here to the bottom, it's that hollow glass reinforced nylon polymer is very, very strong. I've had it now on several different Gerbers and Fiskars over the years, has produ produced very good results for me. So I have no issue with durability and it causes it to have a head heavy um, weight balance, which is what you want typically in most types of hatchets. So that's a good thing. And again, just very robust, but it is hollow. You're gonna get a lanyard hole and you get this amazing flare out that on most of my other tools from, you know, this X7, which has an exact um, dimension that this one does, uh, should be fine. There shouldn't really be an issue. But what I found was because of how short the handle is and how close your hand is to all the weight, within literally about two swings, two strikes, your pinky starts to slide off and then to continue, you're almost at a two fingered grip here to get any sort of wrist action to actually get work done. You basically end up like that. That's end up how I end up gripping it every time That's where my hand end, ends up going. Now, if you're doing extremely light carving, you know, tasks, you're making a spear or something like that, you can probably get away if you're doing very minor wrist flicks, but any type of limb removal, any type of the harder chopping that you're seeing, you immediately start losing grip to get any sort of leverage to get that swing in that you're looking for and that wrist action that you want to really do any type 
of chopping tasks after that first strike. And just to give you some perspective, let's get a take from my dad who went with me recently. He owns a couple of the Fiskars lines, so he's very familiar with this handle design. And what was his experience? Seems to bite in pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. See, both right fingers. Away. Right both away. fingers are coming right out. away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Look. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. And I have small hands. I know. <laughs> so even with those smaller hands, who knows where I got these big, large hands from? My dad was having a lot of trouble and almost immediately getting having to get back here. And honestly, I think that's a major part of the tool. If this even had like two more inches, one more inch worth of handle real estate, I think you might be all right to get more of the chopping and actual work done that you need. But because of how sh close you are to the weight, it's just a counterintuitive, counterbalanced thing that happens and you're just not getting the work done that you want to and it's fatiguing your hand much quicker than any of the other tools that we uh, are looking at today. For not only myself, but my dad, this when it comes to actual chopping tasks and delimbing, it's basically a non-starter. But you may be saying to yourself, well, what about footprint and you know weight? That's an issue and you know that Gerber's gotta be you know a lot smaller and it is somewhat smaller than the S-Wing and definitely smaller than the Fiskars. But what about weight? That's funny you should mention that. 21.7 ounces fully loaded with that sheath. And we're looking at about 19.9, 20, 20 ounces even on just the hatchet itself. X7, throw that on there. Total weight, 25.8, 23.5. So 3.5 ounces heavier, and we'll even say three ounces heavier because I got some electrical tape that I put on myself. So a three ounce difference. This is the 12 inch S-Wing Sportsman's Hatchet, 20.9 ounces, so 0.9 ounces heavier. When we look at weight, there's really no difference between this S-Wing up here, that's 12 inches. So we're gonna get three more inches of real estate overall, uh, and the handle, you can tell there really isn't taking up that much more space. There's a little bit, you know, two and a half ish inches, but we're going to be able to get more leverage, more swinging power behind each swing with this S wing than we will with the Gerber. And for three ounces more, we're going to get a ton more leverage, more swinging power with the X7. I can get a full arm swing and I can hold this all day. I'm not having to reset my hand. The grip is much better because of how much further the weight is from my hand. So I can get that good wrist action, that good leverage. So it's taking more out with each swing by a significant margin for only three ounces more of weight. Finally, you may be saying, well, yeah, but this is like a really precise tool. It's all about precision and getting that precision striking for that you know uh, splitting capability and you know you're not really supposed to be delimbing all tons of types of stuff you know just getting that little quick wrist action making spears and you know doing that type of stuff and other woods working you know you're you're making a canoe in nova scotia or something uh you know that's what really what this is for is hewing out all that little stuff and that's why this is so good well that may be true on some level but my experience is after having the x7 for years I can easily choke up right here and I'm getting the same amount of wrist action. I have the exact same head. So it's gonna be doing everything that this little guy can do. And I can easily work it and manipulate it without much difficulty in comparison to this little guy. And then I can obviously back right back up and get the heavy work done. And if you've never done precision work with a 12 inch S-wing, that thin face, and you put your fingers right there around that neck where the leather starts to flare out and you get some wrist action. I mean, this is one of the most precise choppers I've ever used in my life. And you can hew, you can do all kinds of things and it's very controllable in its work. But still, again, I can back up. I've got three more inches. I can get more power behind my chops. It's gonna dig in a little bit deeper, literally because of the length of the handle. And throughout this video, you guys are seeing some B-roll of the N7, which is the natural line from Fiskars, same head again that we're looking at today, but you're getting a hickory handle and a leather sheath. So just giving you kind of that really classic feel, a little bit different weight balance as well. We'll be doing a full review down the line on that guy and run it up against the X7. But just wanted to show you that as you're seeing some of the B-roll with that little guy. So guys, there you have it. Um, that's the performance level. You know, we put it up against a lot of its family that's just slightly larger, um, significantly cheaper. And I just don't 
get it. I definitely would not be carrying it on my next hiking trip or outdoor adventure. And in general, the nine-ish inch, really compact micro, mini, whatever you want to call it, hatchet world, I just don't quite understand it. I mean, unless you're putting beard oil into your mustache and you're in the process of fine carving your custom countertop for your craft beer collection, I don't really know when you're going to use it compared to like an X7 or any other hatchet in that arena of like 13 to 14 inches to me just makes more sense on almost every level. So that's me guys, but I want to hear from you. Maybe I, you know, just up a Creek without a paddle and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, I want to hear from you guys, your comments, what's your experience, not only with this hatchet, but just the, the mini micro hatchet world. Um, am I missing something or are you right on track with me? I look forward to reading all the comments below. Appreciate your guys' viewership. I encourage you to check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not yet a current subscriber. Check us on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media, doing stuff there all the time. We're over on Parlor now, all kinds of stuff. And until next time, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.